Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and my voice is a little bit crackly this morning, or this afternoon, I should say. Uh, we're going to be getting into a very serious subject. We're going to be looking from a biblical, prophetic perspective about the global events that are happening. Uh, the latest, of course, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, that was that was taken down as a result of well, really, who knows what, uh, a Ukrainian captain of a cargo ship there uh, sends out a distress signal, and then the next thing you know, the ship plunges into the bridge, and had he not sent out the distress signal, far more, many more, more people would have died without a doubt. Uh, but we're going to be looking at that. We're going to be looking at the, uh, the, the situation with Russia, and uh, the, the concert uh, hall there and the attack there that left about 140 people dead uh, in Russia. What this means, what Putin is saying about that. We're going to be looking at uh, the situation with Syria and Egypt. Uh, Egypt, where they had moved last year uh, at, the, at, at the peak of the crisis with Israel and Gaza, some 40 tanks and armored personnel carrier on the border there. We're going to be looking at Daniel's prophecy, chapter 11 specifically. I shared this with you, oh gosh, been probably over a year ago, if not longer. There's a lot of new people on the channel here that do not even know how serious this prophecy is and how what we're seeing happening on a global scale, even more so now than before, this prophecy is beginning to uh, actually come to fruition. How that plays into Egypt, though, like I said, we saw those all these tanks and stuff there on the border that actually plays into this. Syria, all the all the things there. The very the covenant that Laban and Jacob made together that's been violated. How that covenant was violated on multiple scales down through time. Uh, we're going to be looking at all this today, so please bear with me. And I want to thank you, too, for your support of this broadcast. Uh, we can't do it without you, so we really appreciate your support uh, for Israeli News Live. You can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And, uh, and if you want to contribute, you can do it right there online, or you can do it via mail. That would be Danoon Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872, or with my name, Stephen Ben-Noon. Uh, Danoon is the pen name that I write under there. That video there that's actually on the website there, that's probably through Patreon, or not Patreon, but uh, through iConnectFX.com. That's one of those ones you can't say anything really and truly on the channel we're on now because they will certainly silence you. Uh, and, and God bless that former Mossad uh, agent there, Victor Ostrovsky, for having the courage to come out and expose those things uh, that Israel does. And because after all, those that say they're Jews and, and are not, I think that's what's really happening in the Middle East today. A lot of wonderful Israeli people, a lot of good Israeli people, a lot of Israeli people even blinded by their own government, their own leaders. Uh, the, the, the ungodliness has taken place. It's just really sad, especially in light of Gaza and the, the just mass slaughter of the civilian population, all for the sake of Hamas. And yet, obviously, it was an inside job. I mean, all you have to do is go back and look at what Milham Schneerson said to Netanyahu when he was a young politician. What are you doing to help bring the coming of the Messiah? He said, we're doing all we can. Well, you're not doing enough. You know, it goes back to the uh, 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 that this doctrine of do more evil so that the Messiah will come. Well, they're definitely doing it. And a lot of these rabbis calling for the deaths of children and women because they'll grow up to be terrorists. You know what's made the Palestinian people to react the way they have? Have you ever thought maybe because you come in there and annihilate the people to start with? Have you ever thought that what you're doing right now in Gaza is only going to cause more of this sentiment towards Jewish people? And, in the, and, and the sad thing is, is many of the Jewish people don't feel this way about Palestinian people. So many of them, they, they, they're friends with their neighbors that are Palestinians. I can't, I can't even begin to tell you when this first broke out, a good friend of mine, I won't call his name, but uh, I've had him on our program before. 
uh, I reached out to him. He was have, he was going to his Palestinian friends in Jerusalem and trying to calm the people under the situation because knowing that this was really going to cause friction between the, uh, the Israelis and Palestinians. So let's get into this. So without any further ado, let's definitely get into this. Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, the according to Fox News, there search and rescue for at least six ongoing after the Baltimore Bridge collapse. There, there was a distress signal put out by the pilot of the ship, and as I said, uh, oddly enough, according to what uh, Daniel McAdams, who's been on several times, the ship captain is Ukrainian. Hmm. Yeah, I like the emoji he put on that one, right? Uh, and how that the 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 ship, if you put it in fast time, there makes that sudden abrupt turn. Now, I don't know about nowadays. My stepdad was a ship captain, uh, and actually, he taught me to, to navigate ships. I, I actually did one myself when I was about 18 years old, first time ever. I took a ship from about 100 miles out in the Gulf of Mexico and took it right up the Mississippi River all on my own uh, while the captains that I was with on that ship were sleeping, and they had no idea that I was the only one actually navigating the ship. Of course, I was actually asked to, but they didn't expect me to take it up the Mississippi River. Back then, we used radar. I don't know what they use today. I would imagine with the GPS technology and things like that, maybe they can navigate with GPS like autopilot, like a plane or anything else at, this, at that point. The point being, the ship allegedly loses power. Uh, and then, of course, they say, oh, the smoke coming out of the stack. That's on one, that, it's a twin engine ship, you can tell, because there's two stacks on there. One stack, though, that one engine is really cranking, and it's cranking hard. By the way, with the one engine cranking, that's thrusting that one side of the ship, which will make that ship, uh, with a little bit of rudder uh, help there, to steer automatically that sharp turn that it's taking. If both the engines were running full throttle like that, it would not be making that abrupt turn the way it's doing there. But nonetheless, it also tells me that a lot of thrust was put in there. Now, the lights go out again, but the engine didn't stop running. So my question is, when I look at this whole uh, video and everything that's going on there, I can I help, and it is kind of fast forwarded and stuff, as you see, that he's, he's lost the power there. Uh, he, now the engine is running. That's the reason the thick smoke, because it's that thick smoke is on a diesel. That's when you really pumping up the RPMs on this thing, right? But then they say the power goes out again. But see, the smoke doesn't stop. So if the engine's running, there is technically no reason why you would have a loss of power again, th theoretically to some degree. If the engine's running, then the that's what's generating the electricity to keep everything else going. Something else is going on. But could it be, though, that someone remotely took over that ship through a navigational uh, hacking or something like that? Probably so. And eventually they may even say, Russia did it. Yeah, of course, Putin may have done it. Who knows? He's probably busy and they're playing video games or something and he decided to crash the ship into the Baltimore Bridge. I don't think so. It seems, though, that we have a history in this country of creating false flag events in order to justify a war wherever we want to do the war. And we get a lot of help because there's this little country just south of Lebanon over there in uh, the Middle East there that really has a very good edge on technology. And yeah, they are very well known at help coordinating uh, events to make it look like a terrorist attack. After all, you know, we talk about those two little towers in New York that come tumbling down. Just so happens that one particular guy, uh, we'll just say his first name is Amir, won't talk about his last name though, but he bragged in an interview how he was in the, those towers the night before and said, oh, I wonder what it's gonna be like when something hits these two buildings here. How would the world change? He says that in an interview, right? And it just so happens that there were Israeli, hmm, interesting Israeli people that were also in that building that night before. Another interesting aspect we could consider, right? Uh, so all kinds of crazy things are going on, right? Then the buildings come down. And of course, we go to war with Iraq when it's supposedly it is, um, uh, uh, yeah. We go to war with Iraq when it's totally nationals from Saudi Arabia 
that were allegedly the terrorists behind the attack that were uh, uh, hijacking the planes. Of course, the one that crashes out there in the middle of nowhere, no wreckage to be found whatsoever. It just vaporized. Hmm. Kind of like the planes that hit the building, vaporized. You know, think about the technology. They talk about AI technology where they can make it look like you said something that you didn't say or they can make it look like you're somewhere that you're really not. That's starting to come out popular now, but have you ever thought about the fact that um, that technology was known 20 years ago very well? Hmm. Yeah, something to think about. Anyway, so the thing is, I'm waiting to see how that's all going to play out. And, uh, and so it's just a matter of time. Putin now, in the meantime, Sputnik International is saying, it is clear who carried out the concert hall attack. Question is, who benefits? This came out 22 hours ago. Said, but the mastermind, this is what Putin says here, but the mastermind behind it is still in question. Because he does say that it was radical Islamist. Uh, we know that the crime was committed by the hands of radical Islamists whose ideology, the Islamic world itself, has been fighting for centuries, Putin said. Even though Russia knows who carried out the terrorist attack in, in the Krakas concert hall, but the mastermind behind it is still in question, and we need to find out whether radical Islamists really decided to strike at the country, the Russian president said. He goes on to say, um, as well, which today stands for a solution for the escalated Middle East conflict. Well, actually, let me quote the whole thing. In the course of the joint work of the special services and law enforcement agency, it is necessary to get answers to a number of questions. For example, whether radical, even uh, terrorist-minded Islamic organizations are really interested in striking at Russia, which today stands for a just solution to the escalated Middle East conflict. That's what Putin said there. So the thing is, is what's really going on? What's actually happening? You got to remember, Israel wants to bring Russia to its borders in order to justify a Gog of Magog war. So they need to make it look like it's a Gog of Magog war. And oddly enough, Daniel is going to kind of tip us off to that alliance that Israel makes with this king of the north. And a lot of people think it's against because of the way they translate the English of that. But we're going to get into that in just a moment. But I'm just kind of setting the stage for you, though, the, the different world events, the different uh, false flag events that are happening. And, and, of course, it's not a false flag there that happened at the, at the concert hall. These people really died. When I call it a false flag, it's like Putin says himself, who's really the mastermind behind it? They want to drag Russia into a war. But you have to understand why. Now, don't forget, like I said to Egypt, back when all this was going on, Egypt also sent in a bunch of tanks and armored personnel carriers to the border when, of course, as Israel is doing all this bombing and killing of all the people of Gaza. Why would Egypt bring all this military hardware do they really need tanks to control the Palestinians? Are they going to bomb the Palestinians for running out of the country or something? I don't think that that's really the case. But nonetheless, they brought those that military equipment in there, right? So that's something you got to keep in mind. And of course, then we have Syria. Uh, just recently, we had attacks on Syria once again near De Azor. And originally... The Assyrian government thought it was U.S. warplanes that were doing the attacking, but now they believe it's actually Israel that's doing the attacks inside of Syria. Uh, and again, another the, the video here where these where these bombs were coming in at over there. I'm, I'm just showing you all these escalation of events here because what we want to do is we want to really be able. To, and by the way, that's over and that's deep inside of Lebanon, nowhere near the border, and Israel bombing deeper inside of Lebanon. By the way, Netanyahu is totally unhinged right now in the Middle East. And everybody's cheering him on in the evangelical community. Oh, wake up. We, you know, we love Netanyahu. Netanyahu, he, he's going to save Israel from these bad jihadists and stuff. And you forget he's the guy that funded them. You know, before you go to cheering on Netanyahu, 
which by the way, his real last name is not Netanyahu, but you know, his name was changed. And, and, and it's interesting though, that, that they actually, I mean, it's very common, nothing unusual for the Jewish people to adopt Hebrew names uh, as they were migrating back to the Middle East, you know? And so in Netanyahu's case, there, you know, his name literally means a gift of Yah or a gift of Yahweh. That's what his name means. So I can only imagine that th this really had to have been planned out long in advance of what his position would be. They knew he was going to be the prime minister. And of course, the people ran through the streets when he was first elected. BB, king of the Jews, BB, king of the Jews. Yeah, he is the king of the Nagiv. The king of the desert, the Negev desert, is who he really is. And he really is in biblical prophecy. You know, when he went out and Trump went out, I always said they're both going to come back. Now, I, I don't say that prophetically. I don't know that. It's just seemed too strange that both these men go out and both of them actually went out in somewhat of a shame. Netanyahu with all the crimes alleged against him. And then, of course, Trump, they say that he was the insurrectionist. For uh, the sixth of uh, you know January, what happened there, right? So, in, in a way, that kind of reminds me of Barabbas. Barabbas is not as bad of a character as what people really make him out to be. Yes, he did kill a person. He was in a Roman prison, not an Israeli, not a Jewish prison, a Roman prison for insurrection. So when the rabbis were trying to call, who do you want? Do you want Jesus or Barabbas? They, they, they got the people to call out for Barabbas. Why? It was easy to get the people to call out for Barabbas. Jesus was about, his kingdom was not of this world. And everybody is just so earthly minded. They're more concerned about getting rid of the Romans. And they wanted Barabbas because Barabbas already had been involved in an insurrection trying to build the kingdom on earth. This is the same thing that's happening today, friends. Even with all the, the hoopla about Trump coming back into power, which, by the way, I definitely don't want Biden in power, right? You know, and, and I'm not crazy about Kennedy either. You know, I, I would rather have Kennedy, though. Honestly, I'd rather have Kennedy. At least he's talking about peace. And I'm not trying to tell you how to vote. Why would I see Trump is that wild card? I hate to say it, but he's just like Barabbas. He's there. He is that insurrection, insurrectionist. And, and, and I don't say that in a bad way. He's willing to fight the Romans, but he's going to about it in the wrong way. He's trying to establish a earthly kingdom, and he wants to put Israel at the head with the radical, unhinged Netanyahu at, his, at the helm. Talk about Noahide laws on steroid. Put Trump in power and we're going to have the Noahide laws on steroid. And then people say, oh, the Jews would never behead. The Jews are not going to behead anybody. Of course, they're not going to behead anybody. They're going to have the Gentiles do the beheading. That's always the way it is. They didn't want to behead Jesus either. Well, not technically behead him, but hang him on the cross. They didn't want to do it. They said, by our law, he ought to die. You know, the, the Romans said, you do it then. They said, but you are Caesar. You do it. See, it's not changed. It's not changed at all. It's only the time has changed. All right, let's take a look biblically where we're at. For those of you that have followed the channel only in the last year or so, you may find this very interesting. Now, it's very difficult to look at the entire chapter uh, when I'm looking at this. I believe that this is uh, and, and, and it's just the way God showed me uh, years ago about this. But I believe that if we really begin to unravel this, the, it, the different issues there in Daniel 11 unfold over time. So it's not always necessarily, or let me just put it this way. I haven't, God has not revealed to me anything about the earlier parts of the chapter. I mean, we got all kinds of scholars that say it means this, it means that, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But when I look at that, I'm looking at the latter part of the chapter here because I believe it deals with the day we're living in now. It's one of the few prophecies that I do not believe has been fulfilled before uh, modern times. I believe it is fulfilling even now. So let's look. We'll take it on from, say, uh, verse 38. But in his place shall be on the honor of... Uh, okay, let me back up. Maybe verse 37. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers... Neither the desire of women nor any God shall he regard, for he shall magnify himself above all. All right. Now, 
you got to remember when it says he doesn't the, the desire of women. I used to think it would be the Pope of Rome, right? Because why? I'm thinking, well, the Pope of Rome doesn't want to have women, right? Uh, that's not. I don't think that's the issue. Uh, I think what we're dealing with is, it's kind of like a respect. There's no respect of women. For he shall magnify himself above all. Now, I'm not going to try to fit Netanyahu into this, this particular character here. Um, and let's see. And again, we'd have to really, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I backed up a little bit too far when I'm looking at current events, but I just want to kind of just throw some things in here. Verse 38, but in his place shall he honor the God of strongholds or the God of forces. Okay. Um, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and costly things. I think that's interesting in itself. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold. You have to understand, even the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago, in my view, they were not honoring the true father. We know this because Jesus said, you are of your father the devil and his works you'll do. He also said in Matthew 23 that they were a generation of vipers, serpents. And everywhere you turned around, Jesus clearly put them in a lineage totally separate from that of true Israelites. Just keep that in mind when it says, And a God whom his fathers knew not, he shall honor with gold and silver, and with precious stones and costly things. He shall deal with the strongest fortress with the help of a foreign god. And it literally says that too, right? Im Eloha Nachel. That's like an alien god. Now, oddly enough, you remember Rabbi Ariel Tzedak, right? Let me just pull him up, just so you remember, For especially... Um, uh, he was on the History Channel. There he is right there. Um, let's see. Uh, and, no, let me let me do Reptilians. Because he's the guy that actually says the help is going to come from underneath the earth. And on the History Channel, he actually says that. And he says that the Reptilians or the seraphim. Yeah, I don't maybe he's got a point. But what's really wacko is that he says that if you see a reptilian hand, don't be afraid. He's your friend. He considers them to be the true helpers of God Almighty, so to speak, right? And so um just so you see who you're, who we're talking about here. This is Ariel Sadok. My involvement with the okay. television program. And, and I think it's even on this video. Yeah, Extraterrestrials Disclosure. He talks about it in this video right here. So this has gone a long way from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob serving our Heavenly Father to now... Rabbis talking about, you know, like they, have, they, they, they call it the sacred serpent. Many rabbis are into this. No wonder why the Pharisees are, I mean, I mean Jesus says, you have your father the devil and his works you'll do. All the righteous bloodshed, Jesus indicted, do you realize Jesus indicted the Pharisees for all the bloodshed, all the way back to, to, to Abel, for Cain killing Abel, indicted them for it. Imagine that one, right? So anyway, let's take a look now. So Daniel says they're going to they're going to uh, he shall acknowledge, excuse me, with the help of a foreign god whom he shall acknowledge and shall increase in glory. Well, 
That's exactly what's beginning to happen. Now the cat's out of the bag, right? They're beginning to expose more and more. And openly, rabbis are beginning to say these secret and wisdoms and knowledges and things like that. They're really starting to come out, right? Then he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for a price. Wow. I don't think they're just talking about Israel either, by the way. But if you'll notice, as I played in that video the other day, this Jewish lady in New York, they're talking, they've already got plans to, to rebuild Gaza. They're taking all the people out of there. They know it's coming. Now, this is where it gets interesting is verse 40. Because in English, it's not translated correctly at all. It says, at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind. It makes it look like the king of the north and the king of the south are just like bitter enemies and they're fighting it out, right? But here's the problem. In Hebrew, we get right here, Whoa. It actually is saying that the king of the Negev, and the only place that there is a Negev desert in the world is Israel, so if we put it, and they ran through the streets calling Netanyahu when he was first elected many, many years ago, BB king of the Jews, right? So he is the king of the Negev. But it actually says he will push with him. Emo in blue right there, this one right here, that means with him. It doesn't say anything pushing at him. It pushes with him. It is a collaboration with the king of the north. And there's no way you can translate it any other way. Im, literally, the two little letters right there. All right, let me let me highlight that part right there. Im means with in Hebrew. Plain and simple. It's with. You know? Anybody more? I will go with him. All right, and the, the vav on there makes it with the him. So there's no way around it. So he's pushing with him, what? The king of Ali, and, and, not, and by the way, it doesn't say, and the king of the north shall come against him. Now, you could, I know, I, and I don't like it when they do it that way, they will translate the word al, which is in the black right here. They will translate that sometimes as uh, the word against. But it actually says in the Hebrew that this king of the Negev desert is going to push with the king of the north and he will go over. Aliyav is over. Okay? Not against him, not... There's no... It's not a, a fight against each other. It is a... It is a collaboration, the king of the north with the king of the, of the Negev desert. By the word, Negev can be used as the word south, but it doesn't make any sense. And, by, and also, too, Hatsifon. The word Tsifon is the word for north, but it's also the secret. It's the hidden, Tsifon. Uh, there's a famous song, Belly, bon, belly, uh, belly Beat Tsifonte. You know, in my heart I have hidden. It is a hidden, it is a hidden king. Which kind of makes you wonder, if you take it like that there, if the king is really, he's a king, but nobody really knows who that king is that's controlling the north. Or what we call the north. Just a hidden king. The, hidden, the, the king of the Negev, Israeli leader, with some other leader that is going to come, and they're going to cooperate together, according to the scripture here. Berekevet, Berekev, uh, 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 okay, so he comes with his with his with his uh, chariots and with his horsemen, and and he and and then of course the baniot, which is the ships, uh, rabot, which is mini ships, and and they come uba. Okay, the, by the way, here's the part about the mini ships. Uh, the blue there is the part about they're coming with the chariots, uh, and and it was fascinating though that the chariots though. 
you got to realize the chariots have the ability to fly because when it says Aliyav Melech Atzafon, he comes over him, all right? And then it was, this is just fascinating to me when I look at this, right? They're going to go over the king of the north and the king of the south. They go over and come into the lands, plural, and pass through, overflow it, overthrow it, whatever you want to call it, either way. The fascinating part is it literally gives us the visualization that these two kings are literally working together. They come in with all their chariots and all their ships and they and they literally go over as if they're going over Israel itself to attack these countries that are in the Middle East. And and that's what actually what would have to happen. You in order to get to Syria, you got to go over Israel. So when you really begin to look at the way this should be translated, it gives us a totally different picture. It says, He shall enter also into the beauteous land, and many countries shall be overthrown. Again, many countries are going to be overthrown. Everybody talks about, oh, they're going to overthrow Israel. They're not overthrowing Israel. They're overthrowing all the countries in the Middle East. In verse 42, He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. That, you know, it's interesting how they how that's worded there because it's almost as if it was implying that Egypt may have been somewhat of a friend, but they're not going to escape. It's kind of like, oh, sorry, you are a problem. Let's go ahead and deal with you as well. But he shall power over the treasures of gold and silver and over the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps, which is fascinating in itself, right? Because... They're wanting to control that part of Africa as part of the Silk Road Initiative. But here's what gets interesting. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affrighten him. And he shall go forth with great fury to destroy it and utterly to, to, to take away many. Tidings out of the east and out of the north, China and Russia. Now you do have China and Russia involved. And it scares him because he doesn't know what they may do. Will they turn on him? So with his great fury, he's just destroying utterly to take away many. Look at what Netanyahu is doing now and what he is vowing to do. The people of Gaza is just one little small strip and it has become a genocide. Now he's fixing to go into Rafa. It doesn't care what anybody's got to say. And now Biden is getting a little bit afraid. Of course, he's got dementia. Poor guy can't think straight. No way. He doesn't really know what's going on. But somebody in there is saying, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. This is getting this is getting out of control. I got a political career still ahead of me. You know, at least they're, they're just using him as a battery because they're, that's not who controls the White House. You know, between Hillary and Obama, they're the ones that are probably controlling the White House. And that's just my speculation. Don't know for sure. But nonetheless, this is what's going on. And so as I'm watching this unfold, he's concerned about China and Russia. So as a result, it says on there that it scares him. He shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to take away many. So in other words, while he's got that wide open door and with Trump possibly coming into the White House, he knows he's, the Trump's got his back. Because Trump's looking for the evangelical support. And unfortunately, my evangelical friends are so blinded by false prophecy that they're willing to support Israel regardless of what they're doing. Totally negating the fact that Palestinians, 50% of these people are actually Jews, the original Judeans that never left the land during the Roman, uh, Roman times. And yet... They're supporting a false Judaism. One, by the way, that hates Christianity, one that hates who you really are, what you stand for, and one that eventually either you will conform to the Noahide laws or if you believe that Jesus Christ truly is the Son of God, you will be in violation, which is capital punishment. You don't believe me? Sitting right here on my back of my bookshelf, you probably can't see it right here behind me here, but... Uh, I have the Sensino Talmud, right? That's the one the Jewish people don't want you to know about. 
Because in here, it talks about the Noahide laws and the punishment for violating them, which is decapitation. And no, they won't make the, uh, the Jews will not decapitate nobody. That is very true. They won't. They'll give it to the Gentiles to do. After all, that's why they have the 21st degree Mason, who is called a Noahide Prussian Knight. He carries out the edict. So, this is what Scripture really says. Now, and one thing in closing I want to share with you as well. You know, Laban and Jacob made a covenant, but a lot of people have no idea how prophetic the covenant is. Remember how Jacob deceives his father-in-law. Of course, Laban deceived him as well. So it's kind of like tit for tat. He gives him Leah, and he didn't want Leah. He wanted Rachel, but then he serves him seven more years to get Rachel, and you know, and then he changes his wages all these different times. And you know, Laban really was a was a, a crook as well. And Laban is called the Syrian. Hmm, what do you know? The Syrian. But when he overtakes him and he was going to do harm to him, but God had warned him not to do any harm to Jacob. But they made a covenant. And I want to read to you this covenant. Because Israel is violating this covenant to no end. Of course, Laban has violated it as well. Because Abbas's father also attacked Israel. Listen, though. And now come, let us make a covenant and you, and let it be for a witness between me and you. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they did eat there by the heap. By the way, this place where this was done at is in what they call modern day. It'd be um, northwest Jordan, just below the Syrian borderline there today and just to the east in the mountains right there of, um, of Israel is where this was actually at. Laban called, called it uh, Yegar Sahadatha, but Jacob called it Galid. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galid. And Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between me and you. And when we are absent one from another. See, most people just think, in other words, he goes back to his home and Jacob goes to Israel and they become a nation. He's literally talking about absent, period. Their offspring. If you shall afflict my daughters, if you shall take wives besides my daughters. Notice, though, if you shall afflict my daughters, not just Leah, not just Rachel, not just Bila or Zilpah. Or, uh, 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 gosh, I did forget the other name there. But what he's doing today. If you shall afflict my daughters, and if you shall take wives besides my daughters, no man being with us. See, God is a witness between me and you. Okay, God is a witness. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap and behold the pillar which I have set up betwixt me and you. This heap be a witness and the pillar a witness. We're going to come back to this in just a second. That you shall not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. And the God of Abraham and the God of Nehor, the God of their father, judge between us. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac, they swore they would never cross that heat to do the other harm. Now, the, here's the thing. Now, they both have violated it, but Israel definitely violates it. Abbas is not wanting a war with Israel. He does not want to bring harm upon the Israeli people. He wants to live in peace. But this, and here's where the first violation happened. Jacob took other wives. Not Jacob of the biblical times, but Jacob represents Israel. And as we all know, in Ezra, in the prophecy of Ezra, um, you remember what it said in Ezra. See, they had, when they went in down into captivity, they had taken um, 
they had married in amongst the peoples there and mingled the holy seed. That's reported in Isaiah as well as in the book of Ezra. They have taken of their daughters for themselves and their sons and that they have the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. Those peoples of the lands, by the way, were the Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, the ones that had also mingled in with the fallen angels, the Nephilim, and they had also produced giants. You remember about the Maccabees where the one brother, he was like much huge compared, said that he looked like a giant when he had his armor on. Little little insight clue there, right? But in this case here, they did take other daughters other than his daughters. They did absolutely. See, you got to remember when <laughs> Jacob's mother wanted him to go to her people to get a wife. Esau ended up doing that same thing there, went and got a daughter of the peoples of the lands and mingled his seed with them. But eventually Jacob, his descendants, did exactly that as well. That's what he meant by don't take another wife for yourself other than my daughters. Trying to keep that bloodline pure, but they didn't do it. And the other thing was, he said, he said if you do that, or if you afflict my daughters. What Israel is doing in Syria is afflicting the daughters of Laban. And the only reason they're even capable of doing what they're doing, the evils that they're doing, is because those that are in power in Israel are the very ones that had mingled their seed and Jesus clearly identified that, and I'll just show that for those of you, if this is your first time ever listening to this broadcast, Matthew 23, Jesus confirmed that they had mingled that seed. This is why, by the way, there are a lot of critics that want to rewrite the New Testament because they hate it when they see what Jesus says. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? That's what Jesus said about the Pharisees. And the Orthodox community that is so radical that's calling for the slaughter of Gaza, they can't be rabbis unless they can prove their lineage to the Pharisees. You see what Jesus just said about them. And then you got Ariel Sadok going around saying that their reptilians are their friends. A foreign God. Think about it, friends. You want to know the truth? Stick around. Go join our Patreon channel, patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. You want to know the truth? I'll tell you the truth there. But you may not like it. But I'm sure Jesus is happy that somebody has the courage to stand up and tell the truth. And there's others out there, no doubt. God bless you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for listening.